Hello and welcome again to Prohibition University in another of our short educational video installments. In this video installment, we are going to go through the basic steps of making apricot wine, which will then be distilled into apricot brandy, apricot schnapps, call it what you may. What I've got in the boxes in this frame are apricots that I purchased this morning at my local farmer's market. These are apricots that are bruised, um, misshapen, otherwise not appealing for the average retail customer and the fruit vendor sold them to me at a deeply, deeply discounted price. Now in terms of equipment to uh, process the apricots and uh, begin the, uh, the winemaking procedure, you're going to need a uh, food processor or blender of some sort. I use something called a Vitamix, uh, which is a high speed blender. And you can see that it makes very quick work of, uh, of apricots and turns them into a puree. I use an enzyme called Lafazyme. Uh, Lafazyme is designed to tear down the skins on fruit and to extract more of the delicate flavors. And uh, this is optional, but I, I have been using Lafazyme in my fruit mashes for a while now. Um, you'll need a digital thermometer because, as you're going to see shortly, we'll be heating the mash to uh, around about 40 degrees centigrade. Refractometer. I did do a, a basic check of my apricot mash and it had a reading of seven bricks, which says that my apricots have around about 7% fermentable sugar. So to augment the, uh, the fermentability of my apricot mash, I will be adding some corn sugar. I want to get my bricks reading up to around about 18 or 19. Um, I did a pH check with a very basic pH meter that I have and the pH of my apricot mash is about three and a half. So I was going to use my standard distillers type yeast, but it is not ideally set to function at low pH levels. So therefore, I simply went to my uh, local hobby uh, home brew store and uh, I got some packages of wine yeast. And this stuff is designed to function with fruit at lower pH levels and it is very alcohol tolerant. And so I should get a, a very decent ferment and hopefully eight or nine percent um, alcohol at the end of it. As I washed my apricots, of course, I had to weigh them out. And uh, once I weighed them, crushed them up in the Vitamix machine, transferred them into a very basic plastic fermenter bucket, which I got at my local hobby winemaking homebrew store as well. So that's the basic equipment that you'll need. None of it very complicated, all of it easy to find. And you too can be well on your way to making things like apricot mashes for apricot wine and apricot brandy. Now the one thing that you will also need is a propane fired burner and you can see here I've got the propane cylinder sitting in the background just a simple um, propane burner from Walmart and I've got a stainless steel mash kettle so the procedure is really quite simple I took my apricot mash added it to the mash kettle there was a total of nine kilograms of apricot in that mash I added to the mash kettle 18 liters of water and I added seven and a half kilograms of corn sugar and as I heated it gently I stirred to dissolve the sugar checked on a number of occasions what the bricks sugar content level was I kept adding incremental about amounts of water and I eventually zeroed in on a bricks reading of 19 which is perfect that's exactly what I want now, the reason I heat the mash is because fruit contains pectin. Pectin is a carbohydrate. When yeast interacts with the carbohydrate that we call pectin, it can produce a methyl pectate. During the distillation process, the methyl pectate will deliver what we call heads, which is that awful smelling initial part of a distillation run. By heating the mash to just under 40 degrees centigrade, what I'm apparently doing, and this is a, a technique that was taught to me by a, an old time uh, brandy maker, um, you are disabling or denaturing the pectin. As it denatures, it does no longer react with the yeast, therefore you're not generating as much methyl pectate, therefore during the subsequent distillation run, you're not generating as much heads you are generating more of the desirable alcohols, which is what you want. 
After heating it to 40, I let it cool down to just under 30. That's when I add my yeast and let the process of fermentation begin. Fermentation takes around about seven days. And what you're about to see in the remainder of this video is me doing the distillation runs to make the apricot brandy. It has now been seven days since we added the yeast to our fermentation pail and the ferment has now about run its course. What I have to do now is separate the solid matter that's in the fermentation bucket, the apricots, from the liquid. And to do that, I'm simply going to use a separate pail and a bucket. And you'll notice that I have a mesh bag draped over the pail. I'm going to scoop material from the fermentation pail, strain it through the mesh bag, that liquid that I capture will be then going into our copper pot alembic still and we will then begin the process of distillation. Okay, and this is our very basic setup that we're going to use to distill our apricot brandy. This is a 20 liter alembic still from Portugal. And it is resting, as you can see, on a propane fired burner. And there's the propane cylinder there. The alcohol vapors will rise up through the onion dome on the still, through the neck and into the condenser, and the condenser is nothing more than a copper pot with copper tubing. You will see that I have a garden hose that uh, I've got going into the uh, condenser. I will be running cold water at a trickle into the condenser to keep it cool. As the condenser fills, it's going to overflow into my plastic bucket at the back, which I will empty a number of times during the distillation. The alcohol is going to dribble out of the condenser and into a graduated cylinder and from time to time you will see me use the alcohol meter to see what the concentration is. Now this still, as I said, is 20 liters. I'm going to fill it to not more than the level of the handles. Sometimes during distillation the material in the still is prone to bubbling and boiling and frothing and foaming and if that happens you will get material that froths up into the onion dome and even up into the neck of the still and it can create some problems for you. So when I do a distillation run on the copper alembic pot, as I say, I never really put the liquid much above the level of the handles. And so what you're going to see me doing here shortly is dumping the liquid in. You'll see me putting the, uh, the lid of the still back on and you'll see me sealing the lid with a mixture of rye flour and water, which I've made into a thick paste, because I want to make sure that no alcoholic vapors escape from the junction where the, where the lid meets the body of the pot. Once I get that uh, paste in place, I'll be firing up the uh, propane burner very low and very slow and beginning the gradual process of doing the distillation.
Okay, so we've been heating now for almost an hour, fairly low and slow on the burner. And I'm going to direct your attention here to the to the spigot and you'll see some drops coming off. Those are the heads. That's the initial part of the distillation and you'll see that I'm just capturing them in a little glass beaker. They ultimately will be discarded. Now on the volume that I have in this still I will probably get somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe five tablespoons or you know close to 50 milliliters of heads. Once I'm through the heads then I will be putting my graduated cylinder under the spigot to collect the uh, the good stuff or the hearts as they call it. Okay now you can see the dripping from the spigot has increased in frequency and as a matter of fact if I wet my finger and taste it I'm not getting any tingling sensation on the tongue and I'm getting a very nice fruity aroma and a fruity taste so now I know that I'm into the good alcohols so what I'm going to do is simply move my bucket aside for collecting my heads and I'm going to put my graduated cylinder under here for collecting the tails and we will now begin collecting and I suspect that from the amount of liquid in that still I will probably get around about 1.2 liters of good distillate and after that I'll be switching to what I call the tails the final part of the collection process Okay, so we've collected a liter now of distillate. It started off at an alcoholic strength of 65%. The alcohol meter, which you can sort of see bobbing in the graduated cylinder there, uh, is currently reading 60%. So I'm going to stop collecting the hearts at this point, and I'm going to switch to uh, the latter part of the run, the tails. I'm simply going to, instead of using the graduated cylinder, I'm just going to use a glass jar and I'm going to collect the remainder of the distillate that comes off. That stuff will be put into the still for the next distillation run that I will be doing immediately following this one. And so after this run is over, all that I'm going to do is simply uh, let the still cool off for a little bit. I will take the onion dome lid off of it, pour the contents out, uh, give the still a quick wash out, and add more material, put the lid on, reseal it, and go again. So each one of these little runs that I'm doing takes me around about an hour and a half. And during the course of a day, I can get through quite a few of them and use up all of the uh, apricot material that I have managed to ferment out. So there you have it. That's how easy it is to make something like an apricot brandy, apricot eau de vie in your garage, in your man cave. Um, lots of fun. Equipment is not overly expensive. And uh, I do encourage you to uh, take this up as a hobby. It's a lot of fun and very, very satisfying. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Take care.